chemotherapy is given in cycles, and usually it's usually once every 21 days or so, right? You know, you get a scan before you begin treatment to visualize what the cancer looks like, and you get a scan after two or three courses of chemotherapy to see if there's been any change. So that's, of course, is the standard way to do it. There are other things. Uh, for example, if your patient feels better, uh, if they were having pain and the pain goes away. Uh, if on examination you could feel a lymph node in the neck and that goes away. These are indicators that things are improving before you get your scan. There are some blood tests, there are tumor markers which are not very reliable, but they can also be a hint that your patient is improving. But you know, usually you know it before you get your scan that your patient's gonna be better or not better. But ultimately the scan is the answer. So as you can imagine, chemotherapy can be very corrosive um, on blood vessels. Uh, so a problem we run into with our patients is after you're using uh, the arm veins, uh, you tend to run out of veins. Um, and what happens after that is you come in for your chemotherapy, you need to maybe get stuck three or four times before you get an IV put in. It becomes an, a very difficult experience for the patient. And number two is there are some drugs that are more corrosive than others. So there are drugs that if they spill under the skin, for example, they can damage the skin and cause ulceration. So how to counteract that? You need a big vein where there's big blood flow so you don't run into these problems. So there are now two access ways, two access devices that we we recommend. So you have a Mediport, which is what you asked about, and that is basically a, a device that you think about as a plastic bubble about the size of a quarter that's embedded under the skin, either on either side of the chest. And from this bubble, there's a, there's a tubing that tunnels under the skin into the big vein in the neck. And so when you wanna use this device, you just put a needle directly into the port, uh, into the plastic top of this. The advantages of that is you don't have to get your, you have your arms free. You don't get tied in with a with an IV. It doesn't hurt as much. You can look at numbing things to put on the port. And then once the wound heals from putting in this port, you can go swimming. You can get you can do whatever you want with it. The side effects of having a a, a device in your body uh, that's foreign is they can sometimes form clots, and that risk is about five percent. They can sometimes get infected, also about five six percent. So it's a it's a low downside. The second intravenous access device is something called a PIC line. And the PIC line is an IV that's put in the arm, usually at about the elbow level, and it tracks all the way around into the big vein of the neck, into the chest. And that does the same thing as a port, but it does stick out. And so that requires more care. So these are the two ways that we ask for devices to be put in for permanent IV access.